In today's video, we're going to discuss the rock slide behavior. So I'm in my little hiking trail and I'm just kind of carrying along. Beautiful day. A bird flying by. And here we come across an area that's prone to rock slides. So we have a number of different rocks that have fallen down. So I got to tread carefully through here. Uh oh, the rock slide right there. These giant boulders come flying down, almost hit me. It was awfully close. All right, cool. So let's take a look and see how that's uh, how that's done. So um, there's a number of different rocks that are set up here, and then there's this, which is just a rock pile. Um, that's the initial rocks that we see, and then the other rocks kind of come down on me. Um, and these are all logic linked to the trigger zone. Um, so each individual rock has the rock slide behavior. Obviously, I'm only going to cover one, but it applies to all of them. Now, you don't have to use a trigger zone if you don't want to. I'll explain why I chose to do that uh, here in a minute. But for right now, let's just take a look at one of these rocks and know that the same behavior is applied to every individual rock that's loose. Okay, so we'll start with the general tab. Obviously, you want physics on um, and you want it affected by gravity, right? Um, pretty straightforward. The collision shape can vary. So I think in some of these, the collision shape, I'm trying to remember which one it was um, that I did like... Um, Ah, there it is. Polygon. Um, so you can vary the collision shape. You can try doing like sphere, for example, although I've had a little trouble with sphere because it kept rolling. <laughs> it wanted to keep rolling. So uh, I stuck with box and I, I, that did it well enough. It kind of hit on its corner and, and flattened out and stopped. Um, so that's kind of what I wanted it to do. This took a little trial and error to just get the rocks to fall where I kind of wanted them. The, it's, it's a little unpredictable because it's physics, right? So when the rock hits the ground, it's going to bounce, you know, a little bit and you don't really know where it's going to land ultimately. But that ended up, you know, more times than not where I wanted it to be. So I went with it. Uh, so box in most cases, uh, always active. That's important because you want to activate when it's triggered. Okay. And then we'll go through the behavior. So um, the, the prompt text, I just left as default. You don't necessarily need prompt text. You could you know, put it like, whoa, watch out, or a rock fall has started, or you know, whatever it is you want to, want to say, or just nothing at all, it's fine. Um, activation range. This is very interesting because, like I mentioned before, I didn't have to logically get to a trigger zone. The reason I did that is I wanted there to be a rock slide sound. So you heard that happen when the rock slide was trigger, triggered. You get the sound effect. I could put it on each individual rock. There's a sound slot for those. But I figured, well, why not just have one sound effect for all the rocks? So the trigger zone was the way to go for that. Um, otherwise, you could do activation range, in which case it would just detect how, uh, how close you are to the rock. And when you get within range of the rock, that's when it falls. So you could try that as well. I suppose it depends on how many rocks you have. If you have enough room for a trigger zone for, you know, maybe you're doing a, uh, a cave and you want rocks to fall inside the cave, like a cave in, uh, then you might do activation range in that case. Event duration. I think the original was six seconds. I brought it down to three just because I wanted the, the timing, uh, be in sync with the sounding, you know, with the uh, audio. Um, so I, I went with three seconds on that. The hit damage, that's going to be per rock. Remember, each one of these rocks has uh, this behavior, and each one of them has a hit damage. So if it were to hit the player, and the, the player needs to be within a, a range of 50, um, then, that, you know, it's going to add up. So be careful. Uh, don't kill your player unless you intend to. Um, the Remember the the radius and uh, well the radius is uh, 50 units we, we talked about this in uh, the NPC behavior video uh, units in max are a little hard to 
get your head around it first but the way i explained it in that video was the the width uh of a character's shoulder from from shoulder to shoulder let's imagine that's 30 units so that's i'd have to be pretty much under these rocks in order to get hit by them you could expand the radius and try to get more like uh little pebbles and things coming down on them just up to you uh start height okay so uh the start height again t refers to units so you know these start way up here and they're you know they're coming straight down pretty much so um you know i had them up above but higher than where the camera was going to be so you didn't see them and also i have hide rock on so i think they'd be invisible anyways you don't have to do those things you could have like if i took my time i could have just wedged these in this crevice here and had them kind of roll out of there um, but i chose not to in this case it just seemed like more work than ne necessary oops instead i just kind of raised them above and just left them out of camera view the rock scale can vary right so if you're using the same rock you could rotate it a little bit either on its x or its z axis um, to try to give it a the appearance of a different shape and you can also scale it you know you can see this one's just one uh, times one and this one's times one and a half so it gives a different um, sizes it just makes it a little more realistic uh, the ground shake you, hopefully you guys saw that just a little similar to screen shake or where it just kind of gives that a f that realistic feeling of the ground shaking from the weight of the rocks uh, we already talked about hiding the rock so if you wanted it visible at the start of the uh, like before the rock slid you could do that and that might not be a bad idea if you want it to be sort of a trap right that if you're going to set a trap for your player you have to you know, like you don't have to but it'd be a good idea to give them at least some forewarning some way to avoid it um so maybe the rock is there but it's you know curiously balanced just kind of you know looming over you but there's a, a, a safe path right so if we look at this you know maybe we can see that there's uh, you know rocks that are about to fall over here so i'm going to go this route and avoid the rock slide you know so that's a, another option all right, so that's it for Rockfall. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, if you learned anything new, uh, please be sure to click the like button. That uh, that really helps out the channel a lot and makes me feel good. If you're new to the channel or if you just haven't subscribed yet, now is a great time to do so. Go ahead and click the subscribe button below. And if you'd like a notification whenever I post new videos, please be sure to click the bell icon. That'll give you a little notification next time you're on YouTube that a new video is out. You can come and watch it at that time. Uh, but that's it. Thanks so much for watching all the way through, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.